Hello, this is Evan Rogers taking a mellow video, talking slowly so you can hear me properly. We have a conversation here between Yamashita and Minami. What do these two people have in common? They're both locations. <laughs> Yamashita is below mountain and Minami means south. That's hilarious, Evan. You should do comedy. Just a reminder, everything you do, I do solo. And I would very much appreciate it if you kept me kept me, kept me breathing over here. Make a quick donation. Uh, all the links in the description. Patreon and subscribe star uh, donors get uh, rewards for taking the risk of donating every month. Let's get started. Yamashita says, Minami-san, Asta ka satte karaoke ni kanai? Karaoke? Uh, that actually is how you pronounce it in Japanese. Probably, I mean, my pronunciation is going to be a little bit off. I'm a six foot tall, bald, white guy. But uh, it's not karaoke. You're probably used to saying karaoke. They pronounce it karaoke. Um, karaoke. So, Minami san, ashita ka satte karaoke ni ikenai? Ikenai? Ni ikenai? So, hey, Minami, tomorrow or as, uh, the day after tomorrow, the ka particle between ashita and asate gives the idea of or. Ashita ka satte, karaoke ni ikenai, won't you go karaoke with me? This is an invitation. Uh, this this is uh, a little bit N5 grammar, but I just want to go over this one more, one more time because it's, it's quite interesting and maybe you just haven't heard it. Maybe you, you jumped to the N4 videos. Uh, think about ik, iku means I will go or I do go, right? So I go or I will go. Let's just go with I will go. And let's make it negative. I will not go. Or I won't go. I won't go. We slur them together into won't. Now make it a question. Won't you go? Like, won't I go? Doesn't make any sense. So let's ask somebody else. Won't you go? And it becomes an invitation. Won't you go to school? Won't you go to school with me? Hey, it, it turns into an invitation. So similarly in Japanese, negative questions are frequently, when you have the intonation especially, they turn into um, invitations. So hey, Minami, today or tomorrow, you want to go karaoke Get locked in a booth with me? Oh, yeah. And she's like, get away from me, you creep. No, I'm kidding. She says, ah, ine. Asta wa tsugo ga warui kedo. Asate blank, blank, blank. Daijoubu da yo. Okay, so asta, oh, sorry. Ah, ine. Yeah, that sounds nice. Asta wa tsugo ga warui kedo. Asta wa, as for tomorrow, notice the wa particle using comparisons. Uh, ashita wa tsugo ga warui. So tsugo ga warui is, it, it's better just like tsugo is kind of like your plans or your 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 schedule, uh, your timing. So tsugo ga warui just kind of means it's bad for me. Like, oh, tomorrow's not good for me. When we're talking about like making plans and making schedules, it kind of, tsugo ga warui. The opposite would be tsugo ga i. And that just means it works for me. It's convenient for me. It, it works into my schedule, something like that. It's almost better to think of those as just, uh, set phrases but so because we have this but here and we're comparing two days the wa particle is necessary notice asate blank daijoubu dayo the day after tomorrow would be uh fine daijoubu fine heiki uh, all right good okay okay so notice how there's no option for wa at the bottom so asta wa something and then usually we're going to have a phrase like X, Y, Y, and then Z, Y, I don't know, something else. So when we're making comparisons, we'll frequently have two Y particles. This is a little known secret that a lot of people actually don't know. I was on Reddit and getting into a debate about this. Uh, the Y particle almost certainly comes from a conditional form. So uh, conditionals in Japanese are frequently like, for example, let's go taberu would be tabereba. Uh, nomu would be nomeba. Uh, and uh, sureba, things like that, this eba. And wa most likely came from a conditional. So when we're using wa particle, especially like this, what we're saying is if we're talking about ashita, tsugo ga warui. But asate, if we're talking about it, daijoubu da. That's kind of probably how the wa got its origin. The wa particle came into existence likely through that. And you can feel it when you use it in that way. So this is a little bit of a, an interesting thing about the wa particle that actually isn't known very well. I, I hope I get comments about that, get a discussion going. But nobody ever comments in my comments in my video. If you have questions, leave a comment. 
So if we look through here, we have Nanoni, Dakara, Demo, and Nara. Uh, Nanoni and Demo have similar meanings. Uh, they're both, however, uh, Nanoni and Asate, Asate Nanoni, uh, and but the B U T after Asate doesn't make any sense. We already have but happening here. It's clear she's trying to say it's bad tomorrow, but it's good the day after tomorrow. And there's we there's no but regarding the day after tomorrow. Um, th there's only but in the fact that tomorrow is bad, but the day after tomorrow is fine. So Nanoni and Demo are out of the park. Dakara doesn't make sense. That just means because. So because it's the day after tomorrow, it'll be all right. That that would work in a different context. Like, um, hey, I need to drop off some, I don't know, some beans at your house. I don't know why I'm thinking about beans. And I got to do it, you know, the day after tomorrow. Oh, well, Asate Dakara, that's fine. That would actually kind of work. Uh, nada is what we're going for. And the reason why I told you about the wa particle earlier was so that while I was rambling about the wrong answers, those of you who thought, oh, hey, isn't that a conditional? You're correct. This is a conditional. And this is a giant hint about how wa most likely used to be a conditional. And I wanted to make sure that we just saw that slapping you right in the face whoosh, so that you could get that in your head. In case you're ever confused about wa versus ga, Wa's function is very conditional in nature. Sort of like if X, sorry. Conditional means if something happens, then something will follow through. Like if I let, if I let go of my T, it will fall. The following, the falling of the T is conditioned on my letting go. Does that make sense? So the condition that I let go generates the result that it will fall. I hope that makes sense conditionals are how we set up an if then sort of an idea uh, so if you're a scientist and you have hypotheses conditionals are important that being said that's the end of this question have yourself a happy dapper day happy dapper day dapper dan man peace out